Carbon fibre reinforced polymer in sport. Carbon fibre reinforced polymer is used in a variety of industries, from wind turbines to airplanes and even musical instruments. However, one sport which contains the most carbon fibre is motorsport. Motorsport has possibly caused the most advancement in carbon fibre parts development in the last 30 years. But why? Well, this is because carbon fibre is around 10 times stronger than steel and half the weight an advantage that cannot be ignored in a motorsport, a multi-billion dollar industry with race teams who have a season budget of $270 million. In F1, carbon fibre reinforced polymer is used on almost all levels, with an F1 car being virtually made from it. If you look at an F1 car, almost everything that you can see of the car is carbon fibre. This makes the cars very light, very strong and very stiff, a great combination for a race car. So why does carbon fibre reinforced polymer have such an incredible strength to rate ratio? Well, carbon fibre starts out as just propylene and ammonia, which are then reacted together via the SOHEO process. This reaction forms acrylonitrile, nitrile, the base unit that forms PAN, which forms the polymer backbone of the carbon fibre. The acrylonitrile nitrile is polymerised and turned into PAN via a number of different steps. The molecular weight of these chains is around 100,000 grams per mole, and PAN accounts for 90% of carbon fibre production. To form PAN from the base unit acrylon nitrile, it needs to be placed in a reactor along with plasticised co-monomer and a catalyst. This catalyst is generally itaconic acid. This mixture is then blended until free radicals are formed in the acrylon nitrile structure. This then leads to free radical polymerization of the acrylon nitrile to form PAN. This occurs in three steps, initiation, propagation and termination. Initiation, the first step, the free radical is formed from reacting with the itaconic acid. Propagation. The acrylon nitrile, now with a free radical on it, reacts with another acrylon nitrile monomer without a free radical, forming a longer chain. Termination. Two acrylon nitrile molecules with free radicals react to end the reaction. After polymerization has occurred, the pan is dried, then dissolved in an organic solvent. Dimethyl sulfoxide is commonly used. The organic solvents are used to avoid contamination from metal ions. These metal ions will become problematic during the high temperature oxidation, ruining the finished fibre. The pan fibres themselves are formed via wet spinning. The pan is placed into a bath containing spinnerets made of precious metals. It's almost like a shower head, the number of holes depends on the final spec of the fibre. The pan fibres are drawn through. This fibre is still wet and drawn onto rollers and washed to remove the excess solvent. It is then stretched, reducing the cross-sectional area of any voids in the fibres. During this stretching, the voids in the fibres collapse, increasing the strength of the fibre. Fibres are then passed through a number of ovens, causing oxidation and carbonisation of the pan. The first oven is at a temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. This oven is not inert. This causes oxygen molecules to react with the pan via oxidation, causing the polymer chains to cross-link. This increases the fibre density of the pan to 1.18 grams per centimetre cubed to 1.38 grams per centimetre cubed. Once this has occurred, a carbonisation needs to take place to finish the fibre. The carbonisation process takes place in an inert atmosphere. At such high temperatures in the presence of oxygen, carbon atoms will be removed, thus the inert atmosphere is needed. 
In the inert atmosphere, only non-carbon molecules are removed. This removes any impurities and other products, generally ammonia, hydrogen cyanide and carbon monoxide. The carbonization process begins with the first oven at 700 to 800 degrees Celsius. This then moves to the next oven at a temperature of 1200 to 1500 degrees Celsius. Tension is kept throughout the fibre during the whole process. Crystallisation of the carbon molecules is optimised, producing a final product that is around 90% carbon. This is a production of the carbon fibre cloth. From here it needs to be placed in a mould, then by a process of wet layup, vacuum bagging, vacuum infusion or pre preg vacuum bagging, a second polymer is added. This polymer can either be a polyester, vinyl ester or epoxy resin. These are all thermosetting polymers and all of these polymers have their functions and strengths, whether that be strength to weight or elasticity or UV to resistance. The most common form of polymer used tends to be epoxy resin. The reason for this is that it produces a carbon fibre reinforced polymer that has the most strength for mechanical use, but it is also more expensive than the others, so it's not the best for everyone. We will be focusing on the process of resin infusion, whereby carbon fibre is placed in a mould and vacuum bagged. The resin is fed under vacuum to the part. This generally produces the strongest and lightest part as air bubbles and excess resin are mostly removed. The resins itself are varied in their structure. The majority of them work by having a monomer or larger polymer containing at least two epoxide groups. When the epoxy resin is in this form, it's also almost like a thick liquid. It's relatively stable and can last a number of years before it can no longer be used. However, with the addition of a hardener, or in the case of the other two, a catalyst, the epoxy turns into a glassy polymer and sets becoming hard. One of the most common epoxy resins used is DGEBA, diglycidyl ether of bisphenol A. DGEBA is reacted with 1,4-butane diamine. This is the hardener. This reaction causes polymerization between the DGEBA monomers to form a tri-dimensional polymer. This is usually added in a ratio of 1 to 1 or 2 to 1. The primary amines react readily with the epoxide group and the tertiary amine can be added and acts like a catalyst to speed up the setting time of the epoxy resin. The final product is a carbon fibre sheet impregnated with epoxy resin which is very strong, light and stiff and can be moulded into almost any shape. 